I'll show you how to use your Canon R50 to capture astrophotography. I know, it is amazing in this space. Plus, I'll even share the settings that I used so you can capture astrophotography photos as well. I've been allocated my sky raisins. There's a uh, quite a few here. It was just a little while ago now and we're just taking advantage of the last rays of light as we photograph this and uh, we're going to see what we can get out of the camera today uh, pretty impressed you know if you get an opportunity you need to come here and have a look at this Oh my goodness, wow, it is freezing today. I've just come back from a trip to Central Australia and the weather was a hell of a lot warmer than what it is now here in Melbourne. Currently we're sitting on about 10 degrees Celsius so it is quite cold oh, and I haven't been able to warm up. But I was lucky enough to take away my Canon R50 and I have to say that I am super surprised as to what I was able to achieve with this camera. It is amazing, it is fantastic and best of all it's a camera that isn't going to break the bank. So what did I get up to? What did I use it for? Well I'll show you how to use your Canon R50 to capture astrophotography. I know, it is amazing in this space. Plus, I'll even share the settings that I used so you can capture astrophotography photos as well. We were lucky enough to join an astro tour from Yalara that took us back into the Katajuta National Park. One thing you are going to need though to capture, to capture stable footage is a tripod, the Zoom AQ666. It's a magnesium alloy tripod, it's light, and I took two of these away actually with me um, to Central Australia. They are pretty lightweight and they pack down super small in your luggage. They served me well. Robust enough to handle some tough conditions and all I need to do is just hold your camera still and steady while you capture your astrophotography. This is what the R50 sees, but this is what I see. There's nothing there. It is dark. So the ISO is set up quite high and the exposure, uh, I can't remember what it was set on this one. Let's go, let's hit the info button and find out. 
menu. I'm trying to do this in the dark. Let's see what this is. No, let's play. There we go, info. 30 seconds F8. 25,600. Yep. So that was a 30 second exposure. And this is with the kit lens, mind you. So with the kit lens, and that's what we're looking at. It's amazing how much light is out there that these cameras can find. And it goes without saying that you want to be in an area where there is no additional light pollution. So you want to be away from the cities, away from the towns, away from light sources. We were lucky enough to join an astro tour from Yalara that took us back into the Katajuta National Park where Uluru and Katajuta are located. And an interesting fact to note is the International Space Station is actually closer to Uluru than the nearest traffic light. How about that? Closer to the International Space Station than the closest traffic light. Well, there's no traffic lights in Yalara, but there is a light source. And being a small resort town, it is only about 30 minutes down the road. Something else to note was the moon. The moon was rising at around 2 a.m. These images were captured around 9 o'clock at night. And as I said, these were captured with the Canon R50 sitting on a tripod. After playing with the settings a few nights earlier, I found that these settings worked quite well well. Set the Canon R50 to manual. I used the kit lens at 18 millimeters and its widest aperture of 4.5. A faster lens would yield a better result. Change focus from autofocus to manual focus. Left press the AF-MF button and select manual focus. Play with the ISO settings. I used 3200 to 6400. I found the sweet spot for me was around 5000. Press the ISO button and adjust the ISO with the dial. Set the shutter speed from 10 to 25 seconds. The longer the exposure, like 25 seconds, you start to see star trails where the stars are slightly blurred. Press the up exposure compensation button to cycle between your shutter release time or aperture setting, or just simply select this on screen. It's easy. Set your white balance or color temperature to 4000 degrees Kelvin. To do this, press the set button or Q at the top right of your screen and change the color temp. Press the AF point selection index reduce button. It's the one that has the mini checkerboard on it. Now it took me a while to find that button, but now that I've found it and I've shown you, you don't have to go looking for it and use a shutter delay of two seconds, or alternately, use the Canon Connect app. And then that way, you're not going to give the camera a little bit of a shake when you press that shutter button. So with a few simple settings, your trusty Canon R50 with the included kit lens, a quality tripod, and some simple settings, you'll be creating astrophotography images of the Milky Way like a pro before you know it. Look, if you've created some amazing images or you've found value from this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. It does really, really help. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. And if you want to see how the Canon R50 has performed in other challenging light situations, well, have a look at this video that I captured in Sydney, Australia.